Hi 8th graders, welcome to your video homework. Today we're going to talk about the history of work. But before we do that, let's um, remind ourselves of the formulas for work and for power. As you may remember, work is a force applied times the distance in which the force moves. So work equals force times distance. Power is the rate at which work gets done. So when you're calculating power, you'd like to take the work divided by the time. That's what a rate means, the work divided by time. But where did all this work and where did all this power start? Well, before engines and motors were invented, people had to do things like lift or push heavy loads by hand. They then decided to start using animal power. So they would attach some of their loads to an animal and have the animal do most of the work. When animals really couldn't do some of the work that they wanted to, they realized they needed an easier and a faster way for this to get accomplished. So what did they come up with? They came up with simple machines. Ancient people invented simple machines that would help them overcome resistive forces like friction and allow them to do the desired work against these forces. Some of the forces we're talking about, remember, are friction, gravity, electricity, etc. So what are the simple machines? There are six simple machines known as a lever, a wheel and axle, a pulley, an inclined plane, a wedge, and a screw. Before we begin talking about the simple machines, let's get a definition for simple machines down. A machine is a device that helps make work easier to perform by accomplishing one or more of the following functions. First of all, it might transfer a force from one place to another. Think about um, when you're shoveling the driveway, you transfer the snow from your driveway driveway maybe into the yard, changing the direction of a force, increasing the magnitude of a force, or increasing the speed and direction of a force. Okay, so as we're talking about these simple machines, the simple machines um, only work well if there's some sort of advantage that the user gets out of them. For example, if it would be easier for me to rip paper with my fingers, then why use scissors? So what I'm saying is that an input force should be less than an output force for a mechanical advantage to take place. So let's define these terms. An input force is the force that you apply, while an output force is the force which is applied to the task. So why would you use a simple machine if you're still putting in more than you're getting out? You want there to be an advantage there. You want a machine to take a small input force and increase the magnitude of the output force. In this case, a mechanical advantage would have been produced. Mechanical advantage is the ratio of an output force divided by the input force. If the output force is bigger than the input force, a machine has a mechanical advantage greater than one. This is what you want. Let me give you an example. In the, if a machine increases an input force of 10 pounds to an output force of 100 pounds, then the, me the machine has a mechanical advantage of 10. So that's a good thing. You only put 10 pounds into this force and it gave you 100 pounds back that's a really good mechanical advantage. That machine is working well. In machines that increase the distance instead of a force, the mechanical advantage is the ratio of the output distance and the input distance. We would typically take the output divided by the input. This is another formula you need to know, so write that down. No machine can increase both the magnitude and the distance of a force at the same time. 